In this edition of GATV, we'll begin this year's coverage of the 2012 Sun and Fun Fly-In in Lakeland, Florida. And we'll get some flight training tips from the instructors at Ocean Helicopters and North County Flight Training. Finally, we check in with Master CFI Jim Alsip for this segment of Hangar Talk. All right, you are go. Have you ever watched a small plane passing overhead and wondered what it would be like to fly? Well, here's your chance. North County Flight Training can start you on your way to becoming a pilot or even take you further into a career as a commercial pilot with their flight training from private through ATP. For those days when Mother Nature doesn't cooperate, North County Flight Training has a full motion flight simulator where you can log time and practice maneuvers in a safe, controlled environment. If you're already a pilot, North County Flight Training rents their fleet of aircraft starting at as little as $85 an hour including fuel. And because they're affiliated with Aircraft Maintenance Specialist, who is the area's Cessna Authorized Service Center, they're going to rent the cleanest, most well-maintained aircraft available. Their discovery flights are only $99 and make a great gift. For more information, call 561-694-9282 or log on to NorthCountyFlight.com. GATV Online's website is devoted entirely to general aviation. Not only can you watch each episode of GATV 24-7, but GATV Online can be your one stop for all of your aviation needs. Like our flight planning page, where you can check the weather, plan your flight, and even file your flight plan. And the flying resources page gives you quick access to many other aviation websites. There are other pages that cover upcoming events, tell more about the GATV crew, plus please check out our sponsors links page whose support makes GATV and GATV Online possible. Neutra website is our flight training page with loads of information about becoming a private pilot or a sport pilot, including links for flight instruction and ground school. We always like to hear from our viewers, so drop us an email with any comments or suggestions. That's GATV and GATVonline.com. The numbers are in, and this year's Sun and Fun event in Lakeland, Florida drew record crowds. This was our fifth year to cover the event, which has now become known as Spring Break for pilots. We decided to do something a little different this year in camp for the entire event. It let us see a whole different side of the show we'd never experienced before. The EAA plays a big part in Sun and Fun, so experimental pilots are right at home here. Whether you're looking for that hard to find part or something really unusual. Not all aircraft were flown in and you just might be able to drive home with the plane of your dreams. If you've never attended a Sun and Fun, mark your calendar for next year. You don't want to miss it. You know, in four seasons of filming GATV, we run across a lot of items that people send to us to test out. Uh, some of them are nice, some of them uh, not so great. One of the really cool things that we did find was Brightline bags. About two years ago, we were introduced to it. Um, thought that we might want to try it out. It's a lot smaller flight bag. We fly in a lot of different aircraft, and some of them are very cramped. Everyone starts off with a great big flight bag, and that's what I think most pilots do. As we looked at the new Brightline bag, I was amazed because all the stuff that is in our great big bag fit into this smaller bag. And not only did it fit, when I got done transferring everything, I even had room to spare. Uh, everything has its own pocket, its own place. So much easier to find items now instead of being lost in this great big flight bag. 
We're here at Sun and Fun, and we're back at Brightline looking at their new products. And now they've even enhanced their their older their older bag, and now they've got more accessories. Uh, you can almost like custom build the bag to fit what you want. So we'll get with Ross to tell us more about their new product. I'm Ross Bishop, president of Brightline Bags, and uh, we're going to show you the new stuff. And it did start with the original Brightline bag. And we've been selling this for four years. It's the most popular flight bag in the country. We've got pilots in 65 countries using this bag now. But we, we took pilot suggestions from this bag and we enhanced it into an entire system called the Flex System. So here's the Flex System. And at first glance, it looks very similar. The thing is, we redesigned the front panel a little bit to make it more universally functional. And we did some small enhancements to this bag, like for example, the bag itself used to be black on the inside, and now it's gray, so it makes it easier to see things that are inside. So we just did some stuff to this particular bag to simply make this one better. But then we got a lot of uh, feedback from the users for quite a while that we then started to make changes to this bag and we created the flex system. The first thing that happened, we had customers saying, I love this bag, I fly with it all the time, but it's full, but some flights and some situations I need to carry a little bit more than what's in here. The bag has always been able to zip into two bags. So what we did was, we just started making new modules. So the first module is just a five inch center section. This zips right into this bag, gives you the extra storage that you need, and the great part is you didn't have to reload and repack your modules as they already were. The handle can clip into one of these other clips so you can just recenter the load. The pockets are now able to be moved and you can have interchangeable and additional pocket choices. Now, we did this by, you wouldn't know this, but this pocket, these pockets come off now. And they don't look like they come off and they don't act like they come off. If I just open the bottom of the Velcro and peel the pocket right off. So now we have a series of pockets that let you pick and choose your pocket. You just slip this back in, lay it down, and close it up. So that gave us a lot more opportunities for storage on the outside of the bag as well. So then we had more customers who said, all right, I like the original bag again, and what I need to do is I need to go and carry a lot more stuff. I need to go away for several days on a trip and keep my pilot gear. So we created the 11 inch center section. So this allows you to take a whole bunch more stuff and again, keep your original pilot supplies um, organized the way they were. The handle comes off, turns 90 degrees, and clips into the buckles that are here. So it's like a duffel bag now. A lot more places for pockets, and it's just a really large uh, container for a lot more gear, clothing, and so on. So then, we'll go back again. We had a lot of customers said, I love the bag, and it's full, and all I need to do is add my laptop. So we made another module simply for the laptop. So it's great to be able to zip this in, keep all your pilot gear in as well, pick your laptop. Now your iPad also fits into the back pocket of this container here. It'll also fit into any of the places throughout the bag system. So once we had these systems of modules and pockets, uh, some other things began to occur. What if you wanted to go to a meeting with this bag, I mean uh, fly somewhere with the bag, you get there and now you need to go to a meeting. You want to take the main bag and just the laptop, but you don't need this for a particular meeting. So you'll zip this off and leave it in the hotel room. The problem is you're losing these pockets and you end up with kind of a naked back here and the zipper's kind of hanging out in the open. So what we did was we created these same pockets that are on the back of the bag and made it into a panel that just zips onto the back of the system. So now you have a finished bag. I can also set this aside and put the same panel on the back of this bag and make a smaller VFR flight bag. So a panel like this gives us even more options. Well then there were people who said, I would love to be able to carry just my laptop to a meeting. I've gone somewhere and I want to take just my laptop. So I can take this module off, but now I'm losing all these great pockets, and this is where my mouse, my cords, and my cables, and my digital camera, and my wallet, and my cell phone, and my car keys are all up here. So we duplicated those pockets into a, another panel, and this panel zips right on to this one as well. And then of course, these panels can all zip on to all of the modules. You can even go one step further, and you can take just these two panels and zip them together, and you end up with a great iPad portfolio. So the point is, there's now a lot of different modules and a lot of different pockets that allow you to build literally any bag that you need, not only for your general uses, 
but as your needs change, your bag can change with them from day to day. So that's the flex system from Brightline Bags. We have our website, www.brightlinebags.com. You can certainly call us on our phone line, which is 415-721-7825. You can go to the website. We have five standard pre-configuration set up for you. You can pick one of those and add to it or take it as it is. And you can also buy individual pieces and li literally build your own bag. It's like flying a magic carpet. And if you want to experience it for yourself, Ocean Helicopters has a team of seasoned instructors that can train you for your private through ATP helicopter ratings with the FAA approved Part 141 Flight School that offers one-on-one -on -one instruction at your pace. Ocean Helicopters can also provide aerial photography, banner towing, and sightseeing tours. Ocean Helicopters flies the safe and versatile Robinson R-22 and R-44. Plus, for your turbine transition, they have the awesome Bell 206 Jet Ranger. An affiliate of Ocean Helicopters, Bahamas Helicopters, has virtually the same services in the islands of the Bahamas. Ocean Helicopters is located in sunny West Palm Beach, Florida, where we fly year-round, and they can assist out-of-town students. For more information, contact them at 561-625-1900 or visit their website at oceanhelicopters.com. Treasure Coast Avionics in Fort Pierce is your one stop for all of your avionics needs. They have a huge inventory of parts and the expertise to service all major brands of electronics. Whether you need service, certification, or a panel upgrade, Treasure Coast Avionics can get the job done right. If you're looking for that new panel, they have state-of-the-art design capabilities with CNC machining to turn your dream panel into a reality. Treasure Coast Avionics is located on field at the St. Lucie County International Airport. Click on their logo on the GATV online website for more information. Welcome back to our coverage of this year's Sun and Fun Fly-In in Lakeland, Florida. All right, uh, we have something pretty special for you now. We're uh, continuing some of our coverage of Sun and Fun. And for those of you who have watched the show for years, uh, a while back we covered a F-18 Super Hornet that had given us a uh, surprise visit at our home airport in Fort Pierce. And uh, Lieutenant Commander Steve Vitrella was nice enough to tell us about that aircraft. We run into Steve again here at Sun and Fun. He's got a different aircraft painted up pretty cool. We'll let Steve tell us about it uh, and tell us what he's doing here at Sun and Fun. Sure, thank you Dave, I appreciate it. Uh, well, what we have here is the uh, EA-18G Growler. It's a Super Hornet airframe, uh, but it's modified now to support the electronic attack mission, which is what the uh, EA-6B Prowler uh, did. EA-6B Prowler is an aging airframe uh, that's been around from 1960s technology. And so this, finally, the uh, E-18G is now replacing it and starting the transition now. We about have about half of our squadrons transition now to the new E-18G, and the other half of the Prowlers are uh, continuing uh, their mission until they can transition to the new airframe. So the difference between this uh, E-18G and a uh, Super Hornet airframe is an identical airframe, uh, a little bit different electronics inside. Uh, the wingtips uh, are a little bit different. Uh, we have some wingtip pods that help us to locate surface air missile sites so we can uh, jam or, uh, or shoot them with anti-radar uh, uh, missiles. We also have uh, introduced uh, a new capability in this airframe for air-to-air -air, uh, engagement. So now uh, we can engage air-to-air -air, uh, threats as well. Mm -hmm. um, Sun and Fun uh, is always uh, something near and dear to my heart. I came here as a kid uh, when I was uh, just in high school and uh, in freshman year in college uh, before I even thought about the Navy or even knew what that was about. So uh, it's exciting to finally get back here into uh, the Sun and Fun and, uh, and, and share this with, uh, with you guys. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, very good. Well, we appreciate your service and everything that you, got, you guys do for us and the sacrifice that you make with your family and stuff like that. And uh, you're flying one of the most lethal aircraft ever known. Uh, obviously, you've been on and off a lot of carriers, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, so you go to something like this. Uh, what did you start flying? What was your very first <laughs> aircraft you've ever flown? The, uh, the very first aircraft I ever flew was a, uh, a Challenger 2 Ultralight. An acquaintance of mine, uh, Eric Ingram, was a, uh, a soccer coach when I was a soccer referee, so I knew him. And he knew I was interested in aviation, and I knew he was building an airplane. Anyway, he saw it in the newspaper, and he gave me a call and said, Steve, I hear you're trying to buy an airplane. Why don't you come out to our club and learn how to do it the right way and, uh, and come meet some of the guys at the local club. Uh, so I, uh, I did that, and uh, Eric took me out on my first flight in, a, in an ultralator plane uh, about a couple weeks later, and here I am, flying, uh, flying uh, naval uh, aircraft off carriers. So 
So it's uh, so I owe uh, I owe quite a bit to him. Wow, <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. So it just goes to show you that no matter what type of aircraft it is, as long as you're flying something and you're in the air, you can see what kind of a uh, impact it can have. So if you own an aircraft. If you're in an aircraft, if you're flying and you're a pilot, take other people flying. Uh, it can have a positive effect, like obviously it did uh, on Steve, and now here he is, and he's returning the favor by protecting us and letting us sleep sound every night, and we really appreciate your help. We really do. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My honor. All right, here we are at uh, Sun and Fun, and we're back with the SPA, which is the Seaplane Pilots Association. Um, I was in this chair about a year ago <laughs> and uh, met Steve, who is the executive director of the Seaplane Pilots Association. He told me about learning how to fly seaplanes, and I thought, well, that might be kind of cool. I'll go try it. And I did. And, and he was put. <laughs> best thing you'll ever do. Even though if you don't own a seaplane, it's great rating yeah. you'll get. It'll make you a better pilot. Um, it's been a great influence on my life. I've talked to other pilots who have done the same thing. What a great organization. Steve, tell us about the SPA. Well, the Seaplane Pilots Association is really excited because this year we're uh, celebrating our 40th year anniversary and you can see some of the products up in the back of the booth here. But 40 years ago this year, David Quam and uh, I founded the Seaplane Pilots Association Little Ferry, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the real advocacy efforts to keep waterways open here in the United States. And so that's really what your push is. It's to bring seaplane pilots together uh, and give them one voice. Correct. Uh, we're, we're promoting and protecting water flying, not only in the United States now, our mission's really expanded worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so we are expanding you know, our membership through Europe, through Australia, all over. And what we're out there doing is we, of course, put out Water Flying Magazine. And uh, then I go out and work with the decision makers, both at a federal, local, and uh, state level. Mm -hmm. And we go out and do positive, interactive advocacy. You know, why are seaplanes healthy for a community? Why should they be operating? What's good about the lifestyle? What do they represent to pilots? Increasing their stick and rudder skills, as you found out in the J3. Exactly. Right. Uh, you know, all of these things, you know, we have a wonderful proposition for seaplanes. It's a wonderful way of life. It increases your pilot skills and it brings positive economic benefit to the communities that we fly into. Right. So even if you're not going to ever own a seaplane, uh, just getting the rating and learning uh, about flying seaplanes and how to read the wind on the water, I think it makes you a better pilot for sure. Uh, I've experienced it firsthand. Uh, it, it just sharpens your, your skills that sometimes get lost in all the glass and all the other whiz bang gizmo stuff that's out there right now it's just back to basic flying you know? yeah you know one of the things that really concerns me is we look at the the young kids coming up that are you know doing their career track pilot programs in many cases these zero time pilots are getting into a G1000 cockpit or a glass cockpit of some kind they're starting out at zero flight time and going and getting their PPL, their private pilot's mm -hmm. license, around 65 hours, the national average. And then if they're career track, they start working on their instrument commercial, and as soon as they take off, they are taught to start pushing buttons and turning dials, and that's right. how you fly an airplane. And this is before they've had any real chance to develop stick and rudder skills. So what we're doing is we're working with collegiate programs, we're working with professional pilot programs to integrate tail dragger instruction, seaplane instruction, get these extra ratings, get some skills that these kids are not going to be you know, exposed to in other mm -hmm. ways. So we want to get them out in a J3 club, club as you right. did, where you know there's not a lot of instruments, where they have to kind of feel the airplane. They get down low to the ground, and it and it's going to give them a level of training that they're not going to get in their class environment. Yeah. Now, anyone who's watching this obviously is looking at this beautiful <laughs> water behind us. Let's talk a little bit about a trip that's coming up to the Bahamas. Um, you don't have to be a seaplane pilot, I would imagine, to come no. along. Uh, if you've never been to the Bahamas, it's easy to get in and out. Don't be afraid by all the EAPA stuff, and it's a little bit of a process. Um, including this episode, we're going to do a little piece about how you enter the Bahamas and, and part of the process of doing that. And I don't think you'd have a problem with other uh, GA pilots maybe following along and oh, absolutely bringing not. their land-based aircraft and, and, and coming along for the weekend. Yeah, what we're doing is May 18th, 19th, and 20th, we're going to go out to Bimini. Mm -hmm. uh, land pilots are people that don't have a seaplane or don't want to land in salt water. It's no problem. They can go down to South Bimini, land on the runway. We're going to do a coordinated flight out there so everyone's safe and anyone that hasn't flown over water or flown to the Bahamas, we're going to give them tons of support in doing that. 
And then Bimini Bay Resort is actually hosting us. They're going to give us a discounted rate. They're going to throw us a reception on Friday night. We're going to have Harry Shannon from Amphibians Plus doing a saltwater maintenance talk, you know, describing what kind of maintenance is involved when you fly a Cessna 206 on the salt water. Right. So it's going to be a fun, there's going to be diving, there's going to be fishing opportunities, there's going to be hanging out with a lot of wonderful pilots. So we're going to have a great splash in out there. Um, if you happen to fly your float plane in, you can uh, pull up on the old Chalks ramp, which is kind of historical. Not only did Chalks operate there, but the final scene of Silence and the Lambs is uh, yeah, that's was right. shot there yeah. at the Chalks ramp as well. So we're going to have a great event and we're, you know, the, the Hamian Tourism Council has been working with us on it. Bimini Bay has just been spectacular and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Alright, so if you uh, have been wanting to go to the Bahamas but maybe a little apprehensive, uh, it's a very short flight. I don't care no matter what kind of airplane you fly. <laughs> yeah. Bimini is very, very close. By, by, just by the time you hit altitude you can see Florida and you can see Bimini at the same time. You'll be with a group of uh, other pilots of other airplanes if you want to meet and we all fly together. Um, and so if it's something you want to do, this might be a great opportunity to learn how to get back and forth to the islands and it is very easy. Yeah. Give us some contact information for a pilot that wants to come along. Well, the best thing to do is contact myself, Steve, at seaplanes.org and you can also go on our website, uh, seaplanes.org. Give us a call at 863-701-7979. We're going to be doing customs clearing on the way back. We'll all come back as a flight. We'll go into Fort Lauderdale International Airport, go to Shelter. The customs is attached to Shelter, so there'll be fuel, there'll be you know, debrief potential, and we'll all clear customs together. So here again, customs isn't going to be an issue. And I know right. we're going to have you guys there too, so that's it's really exciting. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there, we'll cover the event, and uh, we want to come along, even though we'll be in a land-based airplane. Yes. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of seaplanes there that you could get a ride in if yeah, somebody wants to experience it for the first time. Uh, so it'll be a great time. Uh, good learning experience for someone who's never been across and just a great time to hang out with a bunch of pilots, either seaplane or land-based, and uh, experience this kind Some of stuff. Some of this stuff, yeah. yeah. And uh, expand your horizons, you know, come out and join us. See what water flying is all about. You know, as you can see here, it's a pretty uh, exciting environment to operate in. Uh, the pilots are wonderful. They're really eager to share their experiences and their lifestyle with you. And Tropic Ocean Airways will be out there with this beautiful 206. I'm sure we can get anyone that would like to get their first seaplane ride uh, up in the 206 here, and it's going to be a great time. Awesome. Okay, well, mark it on your calendar and come join us and have a good time. Great. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. Alrighty. North County Flight Training, we are an FAA Part 141 approved flight school. What does that mean to the general person out there learning to fly? Number one, it allows us to reduce uh, the number of hours required to get your license, especially the instrument rating where it's uh, you don't need the 50 hours cross-country time as a prerequisite to start the training. Also as a 141 school, during the certification process, and ongoing with the FAA, they routinely come in and inspect our aircraft and go through very thorough aircraft. So you know we've got good quality aircraft being well maintained as we're open to FAA inspection anytime they want to come in and take a look at the aircraft. We at Ocean Helicopters train our students to all levels of commercial operations. Some of the things that we train our students for is going out and doing different type of long line or types of utility work. This aircraft is here. They're friends of ours that are here visiting from up, up in the northeast doing power line patrol. They use the Hughes 500 or the McDonnell Douglas 500 as they're known by now. This aircraft is what's used for different types of commercial or utility work where guys will go out and actually have a platform between the skids, have somebody sitting outside the aircraft and hover right up next to a power line and have somebody sitting there doing power line repairs. So they use the McDonnell Douglas 500 for that because it's a very maneuverable aircraft. So as you're trained to become a commercial pilot, these are some of the opportunities that you'll have as you build up your time and your experience. Whether you fly VFR or IFR, proper flight planning and having up-to-date charts on board are essential to safe flight. Trying to have Flight Planning Atlas and Charts combines all of these features in one convenient bound atlas. Developed by aviation legend Howie Keefe, 
He needed a better system for crisscrossing the U.S., setting records and flying in the Reno Air Races and his P-51 Miss America. You would need all of these charts just to cover the same area of one Trinev Atlas, and instead of throwing them away every six months, the Trinev charts are good for one full year with free updates. To plan a VFR or IFR flight, you would have to reference many different sources, but one Trinav flight planning atlas has all of the information you need. Divided into three sections, north, south, and west, each Trinav atlas covers a large area for those long cross-country trips, while also containing detailed local information not found in any other charts, like a Rand McNally road map, a cross-country planning chart, miles between airports, radio frequencies of all towered airports, a topographical map of the U.S., and a convenient legend. But the best part of a Trinav Atlas is the unique charts that have all VFR and IFR info together including Victor Airways, Intersections, Airports, City Locations, VORs, DMEs, Airport Frequencies including Weather, Major Roadways and Waterways, MOAs, Airspaces, Sector Altitudes and much more. No other chart gives you this much detail and information in a bound atlas for easy handling in the cockpit. Don't rely solely on electronic equipment that can fail. And with the free updates, you will always be legal for flight in the event of an FAA ramp check. Get your Trinav Atlas today and see why it's the only pilot resource you'll ever need. For more information, go to trinavcharts.org or click on the Trinav banner on the GATV online website. GATV's website and show are devoted entirely to general aviation. If you want to see your business soar, you should partner with us and our other sponsors so collectively we can promote the sport of flying. By advertising on our show and website, you can help share our passion for flying and expose more people to your business at the same time. For advertising rates, simply click on the airplane logo on the GATV online website. Now let's check in with Master CFI Jim Alsip for this segment of Hangar Talk. Jim also. Welcome to my hangar classroom and the video production set for Hangar Talk. Hangar Talk is a feature of GA TV Online. Each week, Dave East and I share with you flying tips, anecdotes, and comment that will promote your flying for fun, flying with style, and flying safely. Talk aims to promote tips for improving flying skills and safety issues, along with a dose of interesting flying anecdotes. Hangar Talk has been a regular feature on GA TV Online since 2010. That is a lot of episodes. Each week, as I select fresh material to talk about, I tend to discount subjects on which I have previously spoken. That is a mistake. Important safety issues cannot be overstated. So, each month I will revisit a Hangar Talk episode from the oldie but goodie vault because safety is never out of style. In general, radio phraseology at uncontrolled airports is less than stellar. But for many pilots, the phrase, traffic in the area, please advise, is like fingernails on a chalkboard. Just talking on a radio does not make us safe. But exchanging relevant information can certainly help reduce the risk of flying. The Aeronautical Information Manual clearly specifies the self-announced procedures for approach to and landing at an uncontrolled airport. At approximately 10 miles out, a pilot should transmit a position and intention report. 
An example of a proper radio call would sound like this. North County traffic, Cirrus X-ray, X-ray, 10 miles west, southwest, 2,000 feet, landing North County. The Aeronautical Information Manual, Chapter 4, Section 1-9, Paragraph G. Traffic in the area, please advise, is not a recognized self-announced position and or intention phrase and should not be used under any condition. Proper radio etiquette requires that pilots listen before making a transmission. Upon listening, the pilot hears numerous pattern position reports and will be advised of the current traffic situation at the airport. There is no need to request an advisory. Maybe traffic is slack during the time an airplane is on the 10 mile approach. No traffic pattern position reports are given during this time. There is still no need to say traffic in the area, please advise. Upon hearing a 10 mile position and intention report, any other pilots in the airport vicinity would respond with a proper position report in due time. When a new airplane is joining the traffic at an uncontrolled airport, respectful pilots will make their positions known to the newcomer. Asking that any pilots in the area please advise ignores the proposition that pilots in the area are making position reports. And it highlights the proposition that the pilot making the advisory request is not listening. The first commandment of proper communication is, thou shalt listen first. Another argument against using the phrase traffic in the area, please advise, is this. Consider that the other six pilots within the airport environment actually answered you. Talk about a transmission getting walked on. Responsible pilots work at the skills that make us better airmen. A good pilot never stops learning. Learn proper radio procedure and phraseology. Practice proper communications and make good radio transmissions your habit. Good habits help keep you safe. Good habits earn the respect of other pilots. Please do not say traffic in the area, please advise. Dave East and I hope you enjoyed this edition of Hangar Talk and we look forward to our next time together. Thanks for watching and if you like the show, please tell your friends. Until next time, this is Jim Alsop reminding you to have fun, fly high, and keep the blue on top. This episode of GATV has been brought to you by Aviation Insurance Resources, Aircraft Maintenance Specialist, APP Family of FBOs, AVMAP Satellite Navigation, Datatoys Digital Video Systems, 
Dillon Aviation Master CFI Jim Alsop. Trade a plane. Heaven's Landing. Jack Brown Seaplane Base. North County Flight Training. Ocean Helicopters. Piper Aircraft. The Seaplane Pilots Association. Treasure Coast Avionics. And Weekend Waypoints. Well, that's all we have time for. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you get a chance, send us an email. We would love to hear from you. And if you're not a pilot, go take a discovery flight. You'll be glad you did. I know I am. But if you are a pilot, take a kid flying. Fly safe.